probably or actually I'm sorry a uh, is it is it athletics or I'm trying to athletics uh, jumps uh, athletic is a jump so just like fourth edition so you'll be able to uh, jump across with an athletics check if you'd like yeah I'll try it but I have a negative athletics e exactly dirt all right so go ahead and give me an athletics check oh yeah uh, you definitely make it with ease uh, you are on the the opposite side you're so, sort of in the brush a little bit and what I want you to do actually what I am gonna do real quick is I need to do a uh, something real quick all right wow actually as you're on the other side of the stream now, you can hear what appears to be a light snoring. A... And it seems like it's coming from the other side of this, this thicket brush that you're up against right now. And you can hear, actually, you can hear what appears to be two uh, snores happening. Not at the same, but, you know, it sounds like it's two different... Uh, creatures or things, or but you can hear two different snores going on at the same time. Okay, then I'm going to I'm going to try to be as stealthy as I can. Okay, give me a stealth check, please. All right, now we need to give their passive perception. Oh man, he crit! Holy shit, what a time to crit, huh? And I'm going to make my way across uh, to where I'm hearing the sounds and investigate what they are. All right. So as you no, you can't go through the the thicket. You can kind of make your way up because you know if you plow through that thicket you're probably going to wake up anything that's on the other side of that. So I'm going to put you right here because as you get up to this area where you're at now, you can actually see that there's sort of like an alcove that's going back into this, into the thicket. So what is the rest of the party doing right now? I'm going to move forward. And also, I mean, do you tell the party or anything about this? I'm kind of... I, 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 I really don't want to, to ask you that because you probably well, should have did it yourself. But Well, actually, I mean, what I was going to do is as I see them move, I just kind of wave at them quietly as, you know, as, as much as I can where they can see me, but maintaining my stealth to basically just stop. Don't, don't come any further. Okay. As I move forward, I'd like to take and look at uh, tracks and stuff on the ground to see if I can tell, you know, about how many people or goblins or whatever has been and see if I could still see the drag marks from the bodies. Okay, you can give me a uh, you can give me a check. Let's see, what would that be? Probably survival, maybe? Maybe, uh... There's a nature check. Uh, I was yeah. going to say nature, too. Yeah, give, give me a nature check. Okay. Nice roll on that, though, Ammon. You nailed it. Lucky roll. Obvious. A twelve. I don't want to die. I'm. i So I want to be stealthy. You don't notice any any drag marks or anything, uh, Edward, from the bodies that you had seen down at the the ambush site. But you do see several, what appears to be a a, a goblinoid type of track. There's a couple smaller tracks, a couple larger tracks. That's about what you... You can't really distinguish what they are because uh, they're wearing like a sort of probably a leather or hide type of boot, but you can see you know, that there has been traffic in this area as of, as of late. Okay. All right, so uh, what are you doing, Wolf? You, you've been really quiet. Yeah, I'm just going to move up, with mostly. Okay. Ah, 
so Craig, you did you did move up then. I see that you moved your miniature up. Well, uh, yeah, just behind the All right, well, next time, keep your miniature back where you were next time, but this time is no problem. I got no problem waiting my turn. <clears throat> Not back. a problem, dude. All right, so as you start to, to round the corner, Eamon, I'm going to uncover some more areas for you, sir. This takes a second because uh All right, huh. Shouldn't have happened. All right, so as you come around the corner, this is what you see. You see several goblins that are kind of kicked back, laying back, and it looks like they're they're sleeping actually. They're, they've got their, they've got like a little uh, leather skull cap, kind of tucked around the, tucked around their, behind their head, using it as a pillow. They've got the, their scimitar on top of them, their their shield, kind of, kind of just snoring away. But there are two of them. Okay. What I'm gonna do when I see that is I'm gonna look back at the rest of the party. And I'm going to reiterate, shh. And then I'm kind of motion to them to come this way slowly. And as I see them start to move this way, what I'm going to do is prepare to fire. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> pull my bow up and draw an arrow and then look back at them. Uh, with the purpose of basically telling them there's something here to fight, but be quiet coming here. Because I can't yeah, yeah. yell to them across the stream. Mm -hmm. you know, hey guys, there's two sleeping things over here. So I'm I'm trying to be as as animated as possible, as quiet as possible to to notify them that there is something that we're that. I'm going to shoot at over here. You use hand signals to warn us of the danger. Yeah, there but come over here because I'm not taking this on by myself. They're just a couple little wimpy goblins, and you can it's actually see a couple, see a couple... There's a couple bows leaning up against the, the thicket brush as well. But it looks like they, they definitely have their... Um, at a moment's notice, or if any kind of startle or anything would awaken them, they would they would definitely have access to their their you know their buckler shield and and their scimitar i mean like immediately because it's literally lying on their chest as they're you know kind of kicked back with their their skull cap behind them you know using it as a pillow so okay what i want to my okay so my intent is to as i'm prepped and ready to release an arrow is to hold it until at least one or two of them get across the stream but if there's too much noise that is made or if they wait for any reason I'm first to attack I'm going to start coming across the stream slowly okay so um, go ahead are you going to basically just walk through it I'm just going to wait to it at uh, like uh, a third of my normal speed okay so you're going to basically try to do it stealthily so okay yes give me a, uh, a stealth check please and I guess uh, you're probably going to do it as well, Wolf? Yes. Okay, so why don't you two give me a... Both of you give me some stealth checks real quick, and we'll do it. We'll do this the old-fashioned way. I want to see... Uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to look up really quickly on the, the basic rules. Nice rolls, guys. Uh, yeah, those are definitely nice about Coupe de Gras. I remember there was a Coupe de Gras in 5th edition in the in the last playtest pack. I'm trying to uh, find it. I don't think it would be on conditions. So, no, it's not on conditions. So give me uh, give me one second. Gentlemen, as I look up uh, Coupe de Gras, I think Coupe de Gras is just an automatic crit if I'm not mistaken. One second. Stand I'll look by. Yeah, if any of you guys see uh, Coupe de Gras, 
Give me a, a yell real quick. Wouldn't it just be an attack with advantage? I was thinking that as well. I, I don't I don't know if they still have Coup de Gras in here. I don't remember reading it. I don't see I it. read something about Coup de Gras. I can't remember where though. I don't think it's in combat. It might be in a... Which we aren't in combat. So. Maybe game rules. It may be with like a holding a, a killing blow and stuff like that. search of the PDF that you gave me didn't bring up anything. Yeah. I don't see anything in, in the... I, I know it was in the the playtest pack. Yeah, it may have been the playtest where I read yeah. that too. Alright, so we'll, I'll go ahead and I'll give you a... We'll just go ahead and we'll do it uh, with... Uh, I think it might be, if I'm not mistaken, it might be even a like an instant kill or something in 5th edition. I just don't want to crack open the, the playtest pack, so uh, let's go with a, we'll just go with a, a 4E, just like an automatic crit, so that's if you guys, you know, get up to them. However, you know, with your, with your two stealth rolls, both Stormwolf and Edward, yeah, those are definitely higher than the DC that I had set. Uh, well, it's actually it's it's higher than their their passive perception. So, bear well, well, Edward, you were barely there, so uh, you sure. needed a sixteen or higher. So, you guys are actually able to to sneak up within the the little alcove there. So, all right. So now that's where you guys are at. Uh, so Kadojo and Robert, what are you two guys doing? Because you see, uh, Amon starting to do a lot of hand gestures and. Uh, you know, signaling and stuff like that, and then you see, uh, you know, both of the fighters start to creep over the, you know, the, the small stream. So, what are you guys going to do? Um, I'll move over to where the uh, warriors were and get ready to cross myself as soon as I'm mapping in. Okay. Then when you do your roll, it'll be <laughs> a bulldozer through the woods. <laughs> bull in a glass shop or something. Um, also, one other thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I was looking at the uh, the status effects. Would, would sleeping be considered being like unconscious or something? Yeah, I mean, it... Well, why don't we just sleeping, use that so. from now on? Do they have sleeping on there? I don't uh, see no, I, I checked for that first. The unconscious looks to be the closest thing to sleeping, and it just says attack all the things that a creature had advantage. Yeah. The creature automatically fails strength and dexterity saving throws. Actually, yeah, I, I do like that instead of just an automatic crit. I mean, there, there should be some kind of... But I, honestly, I really think a coup de gras in 5th edition, from what I remember in the playtest pack, I think it was an automatic kill. I believe I, it was. Be cool. I know in 4th edition, it's an automatic critical hit. So, But I really think in 5th edition, it's like an, like an automatic kill. So... Uh, so uh, let, let's go ahead and go with uh, the unconscious uh, condition, and we'll just kind of uh, we'll just kind of go with this. And uh, I'll look in the uh, the public playtest pack. In fact, I'll, I'll go over this a little bit more. Uh, I I did go through this, but I now I don't remember anything about the coup de gras and the the you know the basic rules. So I'm sure it'll be all you know in the player handbook and everything when it comes out at the beginning of next month. So all right. So I'll let you guys do an attack with advantage and you know like I said you guys are really making no noise at all uh, you almost start to slip a little bit Edward but you catch yourself then you you know restabilize yourself and everything because you are in pretty heavy armor 
and you're able to continue in. So, all right, back uh, we're to like a new round now. So, uh, Eamon, go ahead and make your move. Edward, go ahead and make your move. And uh, Wolf, you can also do your move as well. Uh, move or, or attack? Which Which one were you talking <clears throat> about? Oh, I found it. Oh, where's Coup de Gras? Is it in the basic rules? Um, it's in that how to play PDF that you sent us. When a foe is unconscious, you have an easier chance than normal to inflict a serious wound on it. You can use your action to perform a Coup de Gras against the unconscious creature within five feet of you doing That's so. not in the basic rules, is it? That's in the, the old public play test? Okay. Yeah, keep okay. reading that, though. Doing so requires you to attack the creature. Um, if you hit, the attack is automatically a critical hit. If the creature is already at zero hit points, it dies. Okay. And that's pretty much everything for it. Okay. Alright, so it does make sense. So and that's action in combat. It's in under that action. Yeah. So, alright, so it goes like this. If the creature is unconscious, you coup de grom, dead. If he's sleeping, you gotta roll, it doesn't say advantage for the attack roll or anything like that? It just like says that. it's an automatic crit. Okay, so, so it is... Attack. It doesn't auto-kill them. It oh. only kills them if it's a zero hit point. Already. So it doesn't say that you have to do an attack roll. That's, that's uh, no. the whole... No, no attack roll. It's oh, wow. just an automatic critical hit. Okay, cool. So it's just like 4th edition, then, where it's just a, an automatic At least crit. in this PDF that you gave me. Okay. Right? Yeah, I, I, they, they may have changed it, because I remember the... It was either September or October playtest. It was it was an automatic kill, because I remember uh, a couple a couple of us were actually talking about how powerful it was. and So, yeah, go ahead, and uh, you guys have got the advantage on them. And you guys can sneak up to them. They did not realize with their passive perception of, you know, the, the number that, that I had, well, that they had, you guys rolled over that. So your stealth was better than their passive perception, so you're up on them. So what are you guys going to do? Um, since I have advantage, I'm going to short bow. I'm going to start the combat with the one that's directly in front of me and I'm going to attack it and I'll get my short bow and since I have advantage on top of that I'll get a sneak attack too. Okay, so you're going to have to do your attack rolls because you're not five feet because it, it says the, the target has to be five feet so you can but go I have ahead advantage. and advantage. <clears throat> right. Correct. Correct. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that you're going to hit though. You could roll a one and a two. I know. So go ahead and do your, your advantage roll. Alright, so that that's still a hit anyway because they weren't able to use their shield bonus. So that's a hit. It's an automatic crit. So uh, I'm sure your what is your I'm automatic sure base. crit? Nine. Nine. Base nine. Would be nine. nine. Yeah, you you you, uh, you slip the throat and I and I guess that you guys probably do this simultaneously as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'd hope so. Within a second or two, I'm sure. I'm right, sure he didn't right. realize exactly the second I was going to release my arrow, but all right. So what? But basically, right, so what, yeah. What is the damage of your uh, of your weapon, Wolf? Uh, two d six. Two d six plus tw plus two. Yeah, it's like he Braveheart. Him in half. The guy opens <laughs> his eyes as his face caves in <laughs> as he sees the hammer striking down on his face. So, or the axe, great. or whatever. So, yeah, the, great sword. Great sword. Yeah, both of these goblins of are half. dead. So, yeah, there he goes. So, sorry about looking up the the coup de gras, but I I didn't. I I've pretty much tabbed a lot of this stuff, and uh, I don't remember reading coup de gras on this. So, maybe we could. Uh, it's on page seventeen of the how to play PDF that you gave us. Yeah, that's that's like old though. Oh. But I bet you this that same rule will probably be put into uh this playtest pack eventually. So Alright, so you guys have two uh two dead goblins. They didn't even make a sound. You guys were quiet doing this as well. I just awesome. Boom! Do a little jig. 
I'm going to go ahead and search the goblins. I'm going to search the one that I uh, sliced in half with my greatsword. Uh, you find a, a shiny sword that is glowing Must with a radiant a type of energy. Teaching. No, I'm just kidding. You don't find that. <laughs> I'm such a jerk. <laughs> Are you having problems, Ed? I can't. I see y'all keying up, but I can't hear you talking. I'm going to log out and log back in real quick. Can you guys hear me talking? I, I can hear you. Fine. I can okay. hear everybody. User disconnected from your Sweet. channel. User entered I was, your channel. I was getting worried there for a second. Okay. I think I can hear y'all now. Okay, good to go. All yeah, right, so you guys go. have two dead goblins. Uh, I heard Ed, he was saying he wanted to kind of scour over the, the goblins. And uh, you find a another couple rusty scimitars. You find some more arrows. Well, the arrows and the bows are kind of leaning up, as I was saying earlier. They're, they were kind of leaning up against the thicket. So, I mean, if you want the arrows, you're more than welcome to take them. Uh, they also have a couple pouches as well, and they both have five silver apiece. So you guys can can do whatever you want with the silver, but there's there's ten more silver between those two. Yeah, I'll grab those extra. Hide the body in the bushes after we're done with them. How many arrows did you say there was? Hmm? He didn't say, he just said a couple. We'll just divide the silver between each one of us, that's two apiece. There's, yeah, there's a total of ten. <clears throat> I was saying, I was asking about how many arrows, though. Say there's twenty arrows. Definitely enough to, to fill your quiver back up, that's for sure. Well, I've got, uh, with the ten that I bought, I'm at with the one I just fired, I was at 27, so... Do you need any? Because I'll split them with you 10 and 10. I mean, I have 20 on me, but I, um, I wouldn't mind taking 10 of them. No, go ahead. We'll split them half and half. All right, then. I'll take 10 of the arrows and give the others to Armin. Yep. Sounds good to me. What are you guys doing? You did say that the trail is on the right side of the stream. The side it that is. We're on now. Yeah, you can actually see on the map right here the, where the trail kind of goes into the stream. Well, the, the trail is on the right hand side of the stream. I get a running start and jump across. I'll uh, I'll open up a, a little bit more of this uh, this map as well for you, just where you can kind of see. As he as he barely makes it, I reach forward and grab for his beard. <laughs> dump the beard, dump the beard. The beard of the water. A little little bit more uh visual delightful for you. Visually de delightful, I'm sorry. Slapping his hand away as I land, I say you don't touch the beard. I say, Alright, I know how much y'all don't want to take baths, so whatever. Is there some type of disadvantage on you, Amy? No, that's my kills. Yeah, we're we're keeping uh, <laughs> kill counts now. By the way, wow, <laughs> you guys are uh, you guys they're are a competitive are... bunch, aren't they? Yeah, right, that's what I'm talking about. How did you add the number? You uh, just you hover over it and it. press the number key. Which is going to be really weird when we get to the uh, double digits. Yeah, I don't think it does more than... First one to ten wins. Alright, what do we win? How, how about this? The lowest one has to marry her. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, God, yeah, no. No. I'm not healing, guys. I'm, I'm straight attacking from this point on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I guess I should go ahead and tell y'all now that Bonnie is a... A childhood friend, and her dad is the master of uh, spies for the House Clavel, and she's actually quite beautiful. She's just practicing her trade of disguise. <laughs> yeah, you keep telling yourself. Bullshit! Nope, nope, Bullshit! Nope, 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 
not not possible. We rolled for hotness for her. Yeah, no, that's an official. That's that was not, the There's no trickery in that. <laughs> anyway, back I'm gonna to use the game, my guys. DM, my DM power to make that bitch ugliest sin. <laughs> I'm just kidding. God Hunter Bird. and Bouse Herb, thank you for the follows, guys. Yes, the only to the one community. who's been fooled is the one who's in love. So what are you guys doing? You guys well, uh, um, have the entrance uh, of the cave in front of you. So you know that there are definitely goblins here now. I mean, you you found two two uh, cat napping goblins. I think we well, try to. Uh, I think we should continue to try to be stealthy and search around the area, seeing as how we have not been detected yet. I well, agree. I'm going to go towards that cave and uh, attempt to peek inside to see if I can see anything. You go stealth there yourself, buddy. A stealthy just, warrior in, uh, what are you, in leather, right? You can be pretty yes. stealthy, yeah. So I reach in my pocket and I take out that half-eaten roll that I had earlier that nobody wanted, and I just take another bite and watch the fiasco that's about to happen. So feel free to, uh, move your token up, uh, if you're going to start to encroach into the, into the cavern. And you can see that the the entrance to this this hall is still pretty lit from the actual cave entrance itself. But as you get up to the entrance, you can see that the the light does start to fade to black as well uh, as you're looking into the cave. So uh, I'm gonna give you some uh, some more visuals here. And there you go. This is what you uh, see as you... This is pretty much the entire lit area of what you can see. You, know, you can see that there are uh, some stairs to the, to the eastern side. It looks like, a, like a, some earth-carved stairs that are kind of going up, maybe five feet, five, ten feet, up into uh, what appears to be another, uh, another chamber. There's also to the north, you can see that the, the river is still flowing, and you can't really see much more past what you can see, that you know, the 20, 30 feet that you can see, because it does basically go into darkness. And then on the left, you can see there's sort of like another alcove, but it looks like there's a lot of rubble around this alcove. It may not be, uh, may not be passable, just from, you know, looking into the tunnel, first glimpse, kind of looking around to see if there's any monsters in here, that's what you see. <laughs> you guys are still talking about love and chat. I love it. Sorry, guys, I'm not able to communicate a, a lot with the uh, chat tonight because I'm, I mean, I'm DMing this and a lot of stuff I'm, I'm reading on the fly as well. And so. I'm going to go uh, start taking out my torch and tinderbox, going to light a torch. Okay, so, well, the area that you can actually see at the, the entrance of the cave, Ed, that is basically everything that you can see. I mean, there, there's um, no torch so. needed for any of this. Now, after this, okay. you're going to need a torch, basically, is, is what I'm getting at. Well, I want to see about moving further up and looking towards the right, but move silently up. Oh, you're talking about the, the first set of stairs that are directly to your right? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, the first set. Okay. Well, when you get to the base of those stairs... You do notice that it, uh, it is rather dark in there. Make sure you guys get into the raffle tonight. Thank you very much, Zovia, for, for spamming that. So I can I barely see it. anything. Because uh, uh, you haven't told me what you wanted to do yet. So well, Because when I open up the I'll, map, everybody sees it, just not you. Now, if we were using dynamic lighting and line of sight, mm -hmm. you would just be able to see it. So, Well, I was going to move up to the steps and look 
and look beyond to see if, if I can see anything. Uh, you can't. Uh, no, it's basically a. It's a dark chamber. You can't see more than just a couple feet inside. So. Now, however, you'll probably. This is where you'll probably need a torch to either throw it in or a light spell or, or, or something like that. 